everybody. I asked you guys to submit your chameleon enclosures for me to take a look at and provide some feedback. First off, I want to say thank you to everybody who submitted their enclosures for me to look at. Excited to see what you guys have your chameleon set up in. Also, keep in mind, this is just my feedback and my two cents and my opinion on improvements or things that you guys are doing well. If you're watching and your enclosure isn't being reviewed, still take it as a learning opportunity. Maybe there's things that someone else is doing that you're doing and I make a suggestion. Or maybe there's something someone else is doing that, oh, that's really cool, I should do that too. Take this as an opportunity to learn and get inspired by other people's chameleon enclosures. So let's start with the first one. And <laughs> my computer's not turning on. Turn on. Oh, there we go. We're in business, don't worry. So I got quite a few submissions. We're gonna just start from the very first entry and work our way through as many as we can. So first up, we have Manny. Looking at this enclosure, I can see that there's a lot of live plants in here, which is awesome. Lighting looks great. Um, I would maybe add some more horizontal branches to the towards the top of the enclosure as well as towards the bottom. A lot of people don't think millions will use the bottom of their enclosure, but if you provide them some branches, then it helps them thermoregulate. I'm curious what the substrate is down below. It looks like it's kind of like a mossy substrate. My recommendation is always either keep a bare bottom at the enclosure or make it fully bioactive. Like just having random substrate um, can host bacteria um, and things like that from chameleon poop. So that's what I would suggest. Um, otherwise, this looks pretty good. The next enclosure we have, which is, this is pretty cool. This person doesn't even have their chameleon yet. So they're just getting everything set up, having me double check it. Um, they're pretty active on the chameleon forms as well. So that's a great idea. Get your enclosure set up prior to getting your chameleon so you can make sure everything's working. This is an extra large Repti Breeze. So again, that's gonna be 24, 24, 48 inches. And they end up getting dragon ledges, which is, I think, a good compromise if you don't wanna buy a dragon strand enclosure. They're using a 24 inch Repti Sun 5.0 UVB. Uh, I'm noticing it's going, what is this? Like vertically? I, I might consider doing it horizontal because um, chameleons usually will move side to side versus like front to back, especially if your branches are going side to side. So I may consider turning your UVB to go side to side instead of front to back. The humidity stays at about 35% with spikes to 80% after misting. So 35% is on the lower end for a panther chameleon. So I would see if you can um, add additional humidity. I have a whole video on tips and tricks, so I'll link that up above here. But you want to aim for closer to like 40 to 60% daytime humidity for a panther chameleon. They have all life plants, yay, that says they have an umbrella plant, two pothos, a spider plant, and a bromelia. Those are all great options. I'm noticing like you have lots of coverage, lots of plants, this is great, but you guys notice like the bottom quarter of the cage is empty. It's bare, which is which is good, right? You don't have to worry about bacteria growing, but it's unused space. Your chameleon can't climb down there. So what I usually do is um, they have all these plants suspended. I would add like one or two pots to sit on the ground. This can also help with drainage, like getting the water to go down to the middle. So that's the only real feedback I have. Otherwise, I think this is a great enclosure and your chameleon's gonna be very happy as soon as you bring them home. Next up, we have a cage from Grant who has a nine month old male panther chameleon. I'm digging all these panther chameleons, but you know, I'm biased. It says his name is Erwin. I'll make sure to include a picture because they added a picture of Erwin, who's adorable, by the way. Humidity is normally around 70%. So 70% is definitely on the higher end for humidity for a panther, so just something to keep in mind. This is a great example of utilizing as much space of as you can in the enclosure. The only space where it doesn't seem to be utilized is in that like left, there's like the little triangle of space that isn't being used, but as the plants grow in, that all fell out. You guys can see this is really nice and full, lots of opportunities for your chameleon to climb around. I'm noticing there's not a lot of like thicker branches. I'm not sure what that plant in the middle is, but it's definitely smaller branches. So my only suggestion would be maybe adding in some 
thicker branches, um, especially as your chameleon gets older. Nine months is still on the younger side. Once they get closer to a year, year and a half, they get <laughs> they get heavy, right? They, they get bigger, so I don't know if um, they'll be able to hold the weight. Next up, we have Linda, who has a three-month-old female veiled chameleon named Pascal. Adorable name. It says that the dimensions of the enclosure are 18, 18, 36 inches, so a little bit smaller than the other ones we've seen, but that's an appropriate size. That's the minimum for a female veiled chameleon. It says that they use a 75 watt basking bulb and it's usually 85 to 95 degrees. That's definitely toasty. Um, 95 is hot for an adult <laughs> veiled chameleon and definitely toasty for a three month old. So I would aim closer to 85 degrees um, if you need to lower your basking range or lower the wattage of bulb that you're using to help um, influence that temperature it says that she's using a t5 linear uvb but doesn't mention what kind so either a five point of sun or six percent arcadia would be what i would suggest if there are any tips i could have for my community i would love to know about it. okay that's what i'm here for totally gonna help you out you don't mention what the humidity is so if you don't have one already i'd recommend getting a hygrometer um, I like to use a digital hygrometer. I just picked it up from Target for a few bucks. Just taking a look at the last enclosure that we looked at versus this one, we can see there's a lot more open space. This is going to leave your chameleon feeling exposed. It doesn't allow them the opportunity to get out of the heat or out of the UVB. So I would suggest adding in a lot more coverage. Um, it should be difficult to find your chameleon in the enclosure. So that's tip number one. Definitely add more branches. Um, the little string and twine you have in there, their nails can get stuck in there and actually rip out. So branches are much more preferred. I have a whole video on how you can like sanitize branches from outside, so I'll link that up above here. Um, it also looks like you have some bark of sorts at the bottom of the enclosure. Like I mentioned, either go full bioactive or keep a bare bottom. So I've removed that from the bottom, but ultimately you just need more stuff in there. Add more life plants, add more branches. Um, keep in mind, if you have a female chameleon, which Pascal is, then you'll need to provide a lane bin as well. So take that into consideration when you're building out your enclosure to have room for a lane bin. Um, but yeah, she's very cute, but we definitely need more space. I should not be able to find her that easily <laughs> in this picture. Next up, we have a panther chameleon named Garrett, Garrett, something like that, um, who's 22 months old, so about the same age as Neptune, so that's pretty cool. So this is interesting because it's a, well, like, pretty much all glass enclosure. This looks awesome. You guys can see how full that is, right? That's a jungle. Like, look at all that he has to climb on and all those branches, different sizes, different textures, different directions, live plants. Like, we're creating a mini rainforest in contrast from the last enclosure we looked at versus this one. You can see the difference. You guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm really trying to fill in that enclosure. Um, it looks like the bottom has some sort of substrate. I would just make sure that this is bioactive, which would be like glass enclosures are, are perfect for that. I'm not, sh not sure if it's glass or some like acrylic or something, but so solid sides. Um, the direction of the UVB looks good. Basking spot looks good. The only thing that I would say is this enclosure is on the ground. So I would always recommend lifting your enclosures up off the ground, this provides safety for your chameleon. They are boreal creatures, so being up higher is preferred and makes them feel safer. If we can stand up and like look down on our chameleons, that's gonna make them feel insecure and scared. So if we can raise them up, so at the minimum they're eye level with us, if not higher, that would be best case scenario. So any way you can raise this up off the ground, that's that's pretty much my, my only feedback. Otherwise, this looks great. Next up we have Melon, which is our first female panther chameleon. We're using an 18 inch T5 linear UVB. Thumbs up. I'm so excited you guys are all using the correct UVB. Like that warms my heart. I hope it's from my UVB videos. Her basking spot is currently 88 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That's on the toastier side. So I would see if you could lower her basking branch just a little bit. And they always have a lane bin in the far corner just in case. If you guys didn't know, female chameleons will lay in fertile eggs, so it's super important that we provide a lane bin for them. And it says, P.S. Love your chameleons in your channel. Thank you. That's so sweet. Okay, so down to business. Taking a look at this enclosure, again, lots of horizontal branches. This is great. Lots of coverage. This is great. A big thing that I'm seeing is these seem to be mostly fake plants. I know they mentioned they have like the golden pothos and the ficus. 
but the more life plants, the better. Um, that's a large vehicle, large, loud vehicle. Um, so yes, I would try to eliminate as many fake plants as possible and really utilize live plants. That would be preferred. Um, otherwise, this has great coverage. Um, I can kind of see your lane bin, I think, but good job for including that. And I think, I think this looks good. Next up, we have DBCB Exotics. They have a five and a half year old veiled chameleon who's male. Five and a half is pretty old. That's in like getting close to grandpa years for a veiled chameleon. So kudos for having an old chameleon. That means you're doing something, right? So first thing I'm noticing, lots of life plants. This is great. You can see right there in the middle, it looks like a jungle. Um, looks like a pot of plants at the bottom, keeping a relatively bare bottom. Looks like there might be some leaves whatnot, but like, I think that's okay. Um, feeding cup looks good. An umbrella plant, great choice. Something I am noticing is you guys can see that like top one third of the enclosure is not being utilized. There's no branches. I mean, you have that one plant who's kind of poking up out there, but otherwise it's, it's unused space. So potentially lowering the wattage of the bulbs, then you can get that basking branch closer and really fill in that space could be an option. I'm also noticing that the UVB is pretty small. It looks maybe what, 18 inches? Pretty short, it's definitely not going the full width of the enclosure. I can see like the way that you have your lights positioned. What I would suggest is taking those, I think it's LED lights and run them parallel with the back of the enclosure and getting a UVB that actually goes across the whole width of the enclosure, probably closer to 24 inches. Fun fact, if you didn't know, the ends of the UVB bulb don't actually put out a lot of UVB. It's really like you took off like an inch or two on either end, then that's like the full UVB spectrum. So if you have an 18 inch fixture, then really you're only getting like 16, 14 inches of UVB, which is not a lot of UVB. So if you're able to get a fixture that goes across the whole width, then your chameleon has more exposure to UVB and can really full utilize their full enclosure. So I would definitely upgrade to a larger picture that goes across the full width. Next up we have Jake with their six month old male veiled chameleon named Rango. They said kind of cliche but he's still cool. Definitely cliche and he's definitely still cool so don't you worry about that. So what's pretty cool is that Jake actually made their own enclosure. He says he made it without any instructions and they built it by themselves so like two thumbs up man turned out great. Let's see, it says don't miss the semi-dying plant in the front. Oh, okay, so it's an umbrella plant that's dying in the front. So this is very interesting. Lots of people will always recommend an umbrella plant for a chameleon enclosure, but so many people have such a hard time keeping their umbrella plants alive. I'm like, why are we still continuing to recommend this plant that's really hard to keep alive in a chameleon enclosure? So you're not alone. Like <laughs> a lot of people struggle with umbrella plants. What you could do is um, get a plant White. I have the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED and that's what's in Luna's enclosure and I've had it for like two months now and I've already seen like vast growth on the plants so, like I can definitely vouch for that one I don't know about other plant lines definitely do your research but you can consider doing that um I also think watering is an issue with the umbrella plants like they're not getting enough water because you're misting them right so the top of the soil is getting wet but like the bottom isn't, that's an issue that people have with our pothos staying alive in chameleon enclosure. So sometimes I'll go around with just like a cup of water and water all my plants in addition to them getting misted. But plants aside, <laughs> let's take a look at the enclosure. So UVB going diagonal, love that. That's what I do with my enclosures. Um, basking seems to be in a good spot. It looks like you have two bulbs. One's definitely for heat. I'm not sure what the other one is you could totally put a plant light in that though like a compact plant led and that could help out your plants just a, an idea i love the the zigzag branches going across it seems to be lots of foliage and coverage the pothos up at the top corner that's a great idea because then the pothos will grow down and the vines will come down so that's where i always put my pothos the only thing that i'm really seeing is you guys can see like the bottom half gets like very sparse you have the trunks but not really anything else for the chameleon to climb on. So I would consider doing some um, more branches. I see you have um, like wooden bars going across the side there. So maybe from like the bottom left corner to the middle right bar, you could put a branch and then another branch going the other direction. You know, it's so like two branches going, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, so then your chameleon can get down there or maybe one going horizontal. Like def you could definitely do something with that space though, adding in some branches, especially since you have those um, wooden, wooden bars there though. But the top looks great. You have it lifted up off the ground. Another great choice. And I can see you have the drainage bucket down below and it says that he's gonna be upgrading to the uh, Miss King misting system. So that I think will be awesome. Otherwise, this looks this looks pretty good. I would just fill in that bottom and then try to keep that umbrella plant alive. And now we have a chameleon named Indigo. Um, they're a five month old male veiled chameleon in an 18 by 18 by 36 inch enclosure. It says that they're gonna be upgrading him soon when he gets bigger. I would upgrade him now, honestly, to a 24 by 24 by 48 inch enclosure. People always say like, oh, I'll upgrade them when they're an adult, but by the time they're adult, they're too big for that enclosure. Or just start off with the 24, 24, 40 enclosure. That's what I did. All my guys started out in their adult size enclosure. So that's what I would suggest. They're using a T8 UVB, which isn't terrible, but since you're gonna be upgrading to a larger enclosure anyways, I would also upgrade to a larger fixture, to like a 24 inch fixture, and I would get the T5. T8s aren't terrible, but T5s are the newer technology and they're the new standard for chameleon UVB, so I would really strongly suggest getting a T5. Humidity is between 55 to 60. That's definitely on the higher end for a veiled chameleon, so maybe um, mist less frequently. Um, they're saying that this is their first chameleon if I have any tips and tricks on how to hold him or even get near him. Um, I do have a whole video on tips and tricks for handling and tame me down a chameleon, so I'll be sure to leave that down in the description box below for you guys to check out. So the biggest thing that comes to mind is that this is on the ground. We mentioned earlier that we need to lift our chameleon cages up off the ground, so I would definitely do that. I'm also noticing the Repti carpet, that green fussy stuff down at the bottom. I never recommend that because it it just hosts bacteria. It's so difficult to keep clean and sanitary. I'd be careful of that branch that you have going all the way up to the top. Um, you're, you know, you don't want your chameleon to get burned and I would definitely add in more life plants. I see two at the bottom, but try getting like a pothos plant and putting that more towards the top so they can grow down and provide more coverage that way, especially with veiled chameleons. Veils are prone to eating fake plants, so live plants are definitely the way to go. And then um, some horizontal branches. I know you have like the squiggly ones, but really some like sturdy, thicker, not, not like a log, but like, <laughs> you know, like a thick branch going sideways, horizontal branches. Um, that's the a chameleon's normal walking path is side to side, not up and down so much. So the more horizontal branches you can provide, the better. Otherwise, like for a first chameleon, this isn't half bad. This, this really isn't half bad. Here we're looking at Emile's enclosure. I've actually talked to them a few times on the chameleon forums and Instagram DMs. So um, they don't have a chameleon yet, almost ready. A few more weeks, they're going to get a three month old male panther chameleon, super excited for you. They already picked out the name Orion, like the star, which I love because like I have celestial named chameleons. So I'm all for that. This is textbook, like these are all the correct numbers. And again, getting their enclosure set up prior to bringing their chameleon home. Like I can't recommend that enough. That's the way to do it. The only thing I'm really noticing is that it's pretty sparse, especially for a baby chameleon, they're not going to feel that full coverage. I know you have live plants in there, but really um, you may want to consider getting like, um, until your plants grow in, like a bendy silk vine. I, th I think they're, I like to use the, what are they called, um, flukers, pothos vines. They're silk leaves instead of like the hard plastic ones, so they're a bit safer. Again, I would recommend live plants, but just in the meantime, until your live plants can grow in, you might want to add some of those in there so that they can feel a little safer, especially as a baby chameleon. But send me pictures when you um, get your new chameleon. I, I love that. This next one is a custom enclosure made for two chameleons, which I think is pretty cool. We've got a male panther chameleon named Senior Pepe, who's eight months old. And then we've got Master Sifu, who is a two-year-old male veiled chameleon. This person's saying it's almost all life plants other than the vines with about nine inches of soil as bioactive. Awesome. Drains to a bucket in the bottom with my Miss King supplements and Dubia colony. I do the exact same thing. I, I store all that stuff <laughs> underneath my enclosures. They haven't been tracking humidity lately, but it has a Miss King system that goes on numerous times every day. Also a humidifier that runs about halfway down from the back of the cage. So I would definitely be tracking your humidity, especially if you're misting multiple times a day. 
Um, veiled chameleons have lower humidity requirements than panther chameleons, so we want to make sure that you're able to um, give both chameleons the correct humidity that they need or find kind of a, a happy middle between the two. I love the Bioactive. I think this visually looks great. EVB is one 10.0 T5 4 foot refuse sun, one 6% Arcadia T5 and two veggie grow bulbs. So I would only use one UVB. A 10.0 is already a lot of UVB, and to cut, like to add on a 6% on top of that, that seems like a lot. I would just use one or the other. I would only recommend a 10.0 or 12% UVB if you have a solar meter so you can measure the correct ranges, or if it's so densely packed that your chameleon has lots of hiding places. Because these guys don't have a lot of hiding places, I would stop using that 10.0 and exclusively just use that 6% Arcadia. Otherwise, I think these are great closures, just maybe some more horizontal branches. I see you have like the big like vertical ones, which is fine, but um, again, chameleons really like that side-to-side -side movement. But yeah, I love, I love the plants that you have in here. Alright guys, we covered a lot of enclosures. Hopefully you can take these suggestions and improve your cage if I didn't cover your cage specifically. Hopefully you can still get inspiration and ideas from other people's enclosures. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video. You can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on Instagram at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye! How's working from home going, Neptune?